Hello everyone and welcome to this week's Game Development Log Video Diary and this week I have a huge amount to show you such as the improved animation system, new features in the world editor and loads of new models. So we'll start off with the animation system which I've been redoing this week in preparation for the big upcoming combat system update. Unfortunately I haven't changed any of the actual animations so they're still as bad as ever but I do now have a few more features in the animation system. Firstly, in the old system the player could only do one animation at once, so it could do a running animation or it could do an attack animation, but it couldn't do both at once. So this week I changed the system so that there are now two different types of animations. Movement animations like running, walking, jumping, turning etc. and also action animations which are basically everything else. At any time the player can now carry out one movement animation and also one action animation. You can still do movement animations on their own and you can still do action animations on their own, but you can also now do them at the same time, meaning that the player can move and attack all at once. As well as that, I also wanted to add a feature that would allow any bone in the model to have an extra rotation added to it, so that I could program any bone to face in any direction if necessary. And that's what I've done here, allowing me to control the top half of the player's body with the mouse, no matter what animation it's doing. Finally, I also realised that my current movement system wouldn't work very well in combat, because rotating the player with the A and D keys made it very hard to aim accurately at anything. So I programmed a new movement system which now uses the mouse to control the player's rotation, giving you much more control over your aim. You still move the player forwards and backwards with the W and S keys, but you can also now strafe using the A and D keys. And this is where the feature that I was just talking about comes into use, because it allowed me to rotate the player's upper body to always face forward, despite the lower body facing in a different direction. Away from the animation system, I also added some new features to the world editor. Firstly, you'll see that I've implemented different categories in the Entities tab, making it much easier to find the entity that you want to place. Secondly, I also made it possible to now place mobs into the world, just like you would place any normal entity. This generates a text file with information about the mobs, which I can then give to the server to read, and therefore it allows the server to spawn mobs in the chosen locations. As well as that, entities now have a Y position slider, allowing you to change their height in the world. There's also a plane placement option, which allows you to choose a height for all entities to be placed on, instead of them automatically being placed onto the terrain. And finally, there's a randomized rotation option, which is good for when you're placing plants and trees, and you don't want to have to manually rotate each one. Back in the game, there are a huge number of new models that you guys have been making over the holidays and I've been putting as many of them as possible into the world. So I'm just going to take you on a quick tour around the world to show off some of these new amazing models. Also, while my player makes his way over to the town, I've started up a new album on my Facebook page which is eventually going to contain pictures of all the models that you guys have been making once they're added to the game. So if you want to have a look at what everyone has been creating then do follow the link in the description and if you want to get involved yourself then send me an email and I'll give you links to the dev kit and any other resources that you'll need. So here we are arriving at the town, we just went through the new entrance and you'll have also seen that there are now some stone walls going all the way around the town and they've all been added in since last time. In the town itself we've got some very nice looking house models. I think there are three new ones in total and I'm slowly replacing all of the old houses with these much better looking ones. Here on the right you can see a new market stall that looks like it's selling some pots and stuff. If we go past these old house models on the right you'll be able to see the watchtower that was also added this week. And coming up on the left there are also a couple of new models like that new lamp model there and that darker market stall. I updated the texture for the leaves on these trees on the right here, uh, so that they look slightly more realistic than they did. A couple of new ferns on the left, which you'll recognise from the tutorial series. That's a new lamp that we just went past, the one with the fire. Uh, we're just going to take a left here past the church, past that new bench down there, which was also added in this week. And I think if we follow this pathway up to the top, it should lead us straight back to the town centre, just in time for the sunset. 
But that is it for this week. Next week I'm going to be finishing my work on the animation system and I'll also be releasing the updated dev kit with animation support. So do let me know if you're interested in making some animations for the game. After that I'll be starting work on an improved weapons and armor system before moving on to the combat system itself. Uh, but yeah, thank you guys very much for watching this video. Thanks to everyone involved with making content for the game. Names are in the description below. Do subscribe if you haven't already. Have a fantastic week and I will see you all next time.